Hello you dirty potters, how are you today? What is that? Oh, it, it's clay, duh. Today I want to talk to you guys about mugs and mug handles. I think a lot of people see one type of handle throughout their entire ceramic artwork career because they just end up doing that handle that they were taught. Or they just end up going to Walmart and seeing production work of one type of handle. Thinking that, wow, this must be the most functional, most sellable type of handle. But that's not true. So today, we're going to go over four different types of handles that I have seen and I personally like to use while making my mugs. Now before we get started, I should let you guys know that we're not going over how to pull handles, nor are we going over how to attach handles in this video. This is solely going to be different types of handles that you can put on mugs. If you're trying to look for a video on how to actually make a mug and pull handles, I've already made that video for you, I will link it down below. I mean seriously, why would I show you guys how to make different mug handles if I didn't show you how to make a mug first? That just, that, that just, that just seems dumb. As you can see, we already have our four mugs here, and now we have to pull our handles. And of course, just like in the last video, you are going to need a source of water to be pulling your handle over, something to cut the clay and score the clay with, a simple pin tool will do, your sponge, and a little tiny brush to clean up score lines and attach slip. And of course, we are going to need our four carats of clay because we do have four mugs, which means we're making four handles. And the big bucket of slip too. One quick thing before we get this video started, I know, I know, I be stopping the video all the time like this. The way in which I have already showed you in the previous video of how to pull a handle is basically the way we're going to be pulling all of these handles, and we're going to be morphing them later on. This makes sure of two things. Number one, you already have the skill set, if you watched the previous video, to make and pull a handle, because we're using the same technique if you did learn that technique. I mean, I myself would be a little ticked off if a teacher had me learn a whole new skill set for something that I just learned to do. I already know how to pull a handle, and now you want to teach me like 17 different ways to pull a handle? No, that's good for later on, but seeing as I just learned to pull my handle, I would like to learn what I can do with that already pulled handle. So the previous way in which we have already learned to pull a handle in the mug video is the pulling method we're going to be using today. Secondly, we are going to be going over some of the usages of why I pull these handles and morph these handles the way I pull and morph them. Some of them are shorter and some of them are longer for certain reasons. And that's part of the main focus of this video today. Okay, now, now, now we pull our handles. Calm down. Some of the old Moments later. Okay, we've waited about 15 minutes and these are definitely now dry enough to handle. So now I'm just gonna put most of these off to the side so I can work on them one at a time. First, let's talk about the two handles that you are most likely going to see out in the wild the most. That being the high arch handle and the normal style handle, what I like to call the roundy handle. The roundy handle is pretty much a glorified larger version of this straight round handle here. But the issue is, if you're making a mug handcrafted, it's probably going to be bigger than what a normal mug can hold. And because of that, the roundy handle is pretty much just going to be a giant circle. As I said before, all the handles that we're pulling, I pretty much already put into an arch like this. But you can very easily take this form that we pulled from its arch and turn it into a roundy handle by pushing directly down on the arch like this. And this will pretty much just turn it into a giant circle, which is going to go on the end of this mug, which is a roundy handle. See? Potter tip! If I morph it now and it dries out and I put it on, well, it's just stuck in a weird circle. But what if I wanted that circle to be a little bit larger, or I wanted the arch to be a tiny bit higher. 
Now I can do that when it's already attached to the mug. But if I do it now, work on the mug, let it dry, it's kind of just stuck in this shape. Let's go ahead and use that foreground trick that we talked about earlier in the previous episodes. Most people are going to put their score marks for their mug at the very top, but keep in mind that the higher that you put your score marks, the higher the form of the handle is going to go. For example, if I put the score marks way down here, well I kind of have to attach it down here. If I put them higher, this is going to elongate or make the handle longer, which will effectively change the shape of the handle from here to here. So be warned, if you're trying to make a roundy handle, don't put it too high. But if you're trying to make you a little fat boy handle, yeah, go ahead and do it. Hopefully you can see what I mean now. This arch is a little bit too high to be a roundy handle. So now, at least I can still form it in the leather soft phase to where I can take that arch, push it downwards just a little bit, and reform the entire handle. And now, I have a completely different handle shape. Big roundy handles like this are very popular with people who like to put their fingers directly through their, okay, okay, mine's not big enough. Roundy handles are very popular with people who like to put their entire hand, or at least three to four fingers, through their mug and cuddle their mug like this. I call them mug cuddlers. You can always tell who a mug cuddler is at your table because even though the form that you've made is already fine, they're always going to ask for a bigger handle. And why do they always want an extra big handle, you ask? That's a good question, guy, in the comments below. They technically don't really even use the mug handle as it's supposed to be used. They don't put two fingers in here and use a thumb rest. They don't put three fingers in here and get a good grip on it. What they usually do is they usually cuddle with their mug by sticking their entire hand through the handle and cuddling it very close to their body like this. This is a very large reason why big handles like this are very popular at tables. The second type of mug I want to talk to you about is the exact opposite of somebody who likes to cuddle their mug. This is called the high arch mug. If you pull handles the way I pull my handles, this is going to be fairly easy for you, seeing as all you really have to do is make sure that you have an extra long handle pulled and cut it diagonal all the way at its base. You pretty much just have it set to go. Potter tip! High arch handles like this are aptly named because, well, I mean, we're not going to push it down like with the other one like this, we're going to keep it highly arched because you know, there's, there's, there's a high arch here. These types of handles usually look best on longer, lengthier bodies, like this. They have a longer body so you can stick your fingers through the actual high arch of the handle. But be warned, many people find it unattractive to get a more stout or a smaller mug and put a high arch handle on it. This just sort of looks wrong to be honest with you. You're getting a handle that's kind of meant for a very long body and putting it on a very short body. Short handles tend to look better on shorter mugs or stouter bodies, while longer handles tend to look better on longer mugs or longer bodies. The high arch mug is actually pretty useful, and I know a good amount of people who prefer them over the roundy mugs, because they like to hold their cups by the handle. The roundy handle you could have pretty much just put right in the middle of your mug like this if you wanted, but the high arch usually benefits from being a little bit higher on the mug itself. These look really good on cups with longer bodies, and you can usually tell when people like high arches because they will stick two fingers in here, put their thumb right here, and rest this mug on the entirety of their wrist. These are the two types of people that I usually, usually, for the guy in the comments below who's about to name a third person, come across for people who buy mugs at art tables. They either want really high arch stuff because they want that wrist support, seeing as they actually use the handle, or they want a really big handle so that they can stick their entire hand through the mug. 
When I frequently had art tables and I was selling mugs on a regular basis, I would usually get a couple and regardless of their gender or whether they actually have kids or not, I would always get some dad looking person who's like, man, I really wish this was a higher arch. I like, I like to hold my mugs like this as I drink my morning coffee. And then I would have every other type of person who's like, well, I really wish I had a bigger handle because I really like to cuddle with my mug as I drink from it like this. Yeah, you little mug cuddler. Let's move on to the third type of handle, which is the thumb rest. We're just gonna use the same exact handle that we made a second ago because this one's pretty easy, seeing as the handle has almost nothing to do with it after you attach it. Now you can technically do this to any type of mug handle that you want to. Go ahead and just grab a little piece of clay and make it into a little ball. Once you've made it into a little ball, flatten it just a tiny bit. Yeah, just like that. Score one part of the little ball. Score the very top of the handle that you probably just attached. Put a little bit of slip on both sides. And very gently apply the scored and slip sides together. Go ahead and just push that right down. It's a good idea to not just push down like this from one angle. Make sure you're putting counter pressure on the other side as well. This will make sure all the pressure goes in the middle and you're not just squishing your handle that's probably still wet, fresh, and movable around. Once you've made a nice little indent in the very top of your handle with this little ball, go ahead, wet your thumb, and just drag it right down your handle, just a bit. It doesn't have to be a hard and long drag because I will admit, the softer your handle is, the more chance you have of messing up your handle while doing this. Potter tip! This type of handle also benefits a little bit more if you make this little dot here a bigger dent, which means you're gonna have to re-wet your thumb a little bit and just go over this back and forth just for a second. This type of mug isn't super important or anything, just some people really like having that extra stability with their thumb whenever they're drinking out of their mug, especially those who like the high arch mugs and really just use their fingers on the inside of the mug handle. But it's also massively easy to just take a little bit of clay, push it right in, and there, now you have a completely different type of mug. I personally like to get a little bit more clay and instead of pushing like this, I like to go upside down and push like this. Because instead of resting my thumb at the very top of this, I usually put a lot of pressure at the very top of the rim of the mug. Handle type number four, what I have called the fat boy. Okay, it's actually not called the fat boy, it's called the bottom handle, but I've been calling it the fat boy for like, five years, so no one's changing my mind. Fight me in the comments below. This type of handle is made for bottom heavy mugs. I made sure when I threw this yesterday to make sure that all the clay is stuck down here. This is, this is, this is a thick boy here. Which means all the weight is at the bottom of the mug and it's most likely going to need a little bit more support. So what I usually do to remedy this is I'll take a handle that I just cut off of my wedge, get the two ends and stick them together, making it basically into a circle. The cool thing about this mug is you don't really have to measure it or see how it would look on the mug itself. All you have to do is score both sides because you already know where you're gonna put this at the very bottom of your mug. Score this side right here at the very bottom of the mug. Put a little bit of slip right here and right here and just push in right at the bottom. You can kind of be a little bit rougher with this one simply because it's basically going on the thickest part of the clay. If you are making a fat boy mug, make sure that the very bottom of the handle does not go past the very bottom of the mug. This will fuse it to the kiln shelf when you fire it and glaze it. If you find that this goes a little bit below the actual bottom of the mug, just bring it up a tiny bit like this. You see, there you go. Now all the weight is distributed at the very bottom of the mug. You can just carry all that weight instead of worrying about the weaker part of the cup. And you only had to score and slip one section. I do this a lot sometimes whenever I mess up on handles. If I don't have the right length or it doesn't look correct, I'll usually just take the two sides, put them together, and make myself a little fat boy mug, especially if it's a smaller and stouter mug, just like this. This type of handle would have also looked pretty good on this type of mug right here, seeing as they are much smaller and stouter than the other mugs we did earlier. This type of handle also has a little secret. If you just put your hand right here as if you were going to hold it, jam your middle finger up a little bit, it kind of automatically makes this little placeholder for your knuckle. This is pretty much the upside down version of that little thumb rest that I showed you earlier. This is a knuckle rest. I do this to almost all of my thick boy handles because if I'm carrying all my weight at the bottom, you know, 
like a like a good little thick boy. Then I'm going to want something to rest my knuckle on, and this automatically kind of makes that rest. As I mentioned earlier, you can put these types of handles on any shape that you want. I'm not going to tell you where and how to put your, um, okay, okay, that's the entire point of this video. But you could very easily put a thick boy handle on something like this. It would just look a little bit weird and you would have to carry all this extra weight. It would make it really unbalanced. That's usually why I keep the longer handles for the longer mugs and the shorter handles for the shorter ones. Keep this in mind whenever you're pulling handles. If you have a line of handles to pull and you notice some of them are longer than others, go ahead and save those to the side for the longer mugs. Well, thank you, Dirty Potters, for joining me today. I, wait, what? You see one more mug, you say? Okay, if you say so. I mean, I do have one more handle here, so I guess. Let's go over a fifth type of handle, which I have deemed the Dante handle. The Dante handle also comes with a little rant on the side, so if you're not prepared for a little bit of salt, you should leave now. This was your warning. Dalton, you're not supposed to name handles after yourself. It's not like you're the proprietor of handles. Of us. Shut up. This type of handle starts off with the knowledge that I honestly don't understand handles. Even if I'm drinking coffee, I prefer to drink them out of a non-handled cup like this. For good logical reason, I think. You see, a handle is primarily used for one of two reasons. Either number one, you're carrying the mug around in which you're going to be drinking out of, which makes mugs very popular for offices or around the house whenever you want to carry it somewhere, but not if you're just sitting down and enjoying your coffee or tea, which in my opinion is the best way to enjoy those two things. Second reason why I don't really enjoy handles that much being that I don't really use handles. You see, most people use a handle because the contents of the cup that they're holding is too hot to hold with their bare hands, which means that the liquid inside is most likely warming or if not burning their hands a tiny bit because of pure heat from the contents of the mug itself. That being said, if the liquid on the inside of the mug is going all the way through the ceramic ware to the outside of your hand and still burning you, you would need a handle and that totally makes sense. You actually need a handle, that way you don't need to burn yourself. But going further into that same premise, if the liquid on the inside of the cup is so hot that you need a handle to hold on to it, then you really shouldn't be drinking it in the first place. Just think about it for a second. If the contents on the inside of the cup are too hot for your hands, which clearly have thicker skin than the inside of your mouth, what makes you think you can stick this hot liquid that's already burning your hands on the inside of your body, your mouth, a more sensitive part than your hands. Because of that, I don't really understand handles unless you're really just carrying around liquid. My theory is that people honestly just like to hold handles. That's it. That I usually hold most of my containers either like this or like this on the two edges. I drink from them like this or I drink from them like this. But part of the job of a handle is to have stability. And because I hold mine like this, well, I don't really need more stability down here, now do I? But this, this is free over here, and I could do something with this. What I've learned to do over time is cut off a little handle for myself. I get the handle as low as I can, and at this point, I can hold my mug like this and stick my thumb right through here as kind of a stabilizer. I don't know many people who hold mugs the way in which I hold mugs, and if you're one of those people, please leave it down in the comments below. I, I, would, I would love to know if there's more of me out there. You can still technically hold it with fingers, like a normal mug, but I don't find myself doing this very often, seeing as I don't hold my mugs like that in the first place. Maybe if I'm transporting a mug, I'll do that, but I usually hold it from the bottom and stick my little thumb in here if I do put a handle on my mugs that I personally use in the first place, which I usually don't. Hopefully some of you can see my logic in this though. If the liquid inside the cup is too hot for you to actually hold the mug, where the liquid is going through a surface and burning your hand, it probably shouldn't be in your mouth. It's probably best you just wait until the temperature inside the mug is cool enough for you to touch it and that's a good sign that it's ready to be put inside of your body. You know, the part that's usually more sensitive than your hand that you use to touch physical stuff with all day long, the inside of your mouth which you don't want to put hot liquid inside of? Why do we even use handles? Just be patient. I'm really convinced that half of you out there are really just mug cuddlers that find excuses to have handles. 
But thank you Dirty Potters for joining me today. I really hope that some of these handles helped you guys out and getting a little bit of variety in your mugs. I, I think we're all kind of tired of seeing the same mug over and over and over and over again and we like a little bit of variety in our handles and our mugs themselves. If you'd like to see any of my artwork, the links are always down below for your beautiful Potter eyes to see. The Facebook and our new Discord community is popping right now. There are tons of helpful Dirty Potters over there that have tons of information. There's, we got some real glaze connoisseurs over there. I love your Dirty Potter faces and I will see you guys next week. What's wrong with that? I just want to cuddle my mug. I just want to, I mean my cat, my cat doesn't like me. I need something to cuddle with so I cuddle my mug.